Yeah, how in the world we're going to route between these VLANs? Remember, VLANs are subnets. And in order to move traffic between subnets, we need a router. One way in which we are going to move traffic between VLANs, and we're going to show you how to configure this, is called a router on a stick. Yeah, or because I'm a big fan of Las Vegas, I call it the one-arm bandit configuration. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to take a router and we're going to connect the router with an 802.1Q trunk to a switch, a layer two switch, and we're going to route between VLANs. Yeah, pretty cool. We're going to have 10112 send the traffic into the switch, have the, let me clear the marks here and let me redraw this. We're going to have this PC send its traffic into the switch, VLAN 1, destined for VLAN 2. We're going to have the switch send this over the trunk to the router and then have the router route the traffic into the other VLAN. Would you aim to do it this way in a big, complex network? No way. No way. Because that router on a stick represents much too dangerous of a single point of failure. What you would do in a real, live, robust, big network is you would invest in a multi-layer switch. You would invest in a switch that has a router built inside it. Yeah, the router built inside it will allow it to very easily, very succinctly route between these VLANs because the routing intelligence is built right into the switch. Notice here, uh, we do this router on a stick in this class because we're talking about small network environments. We could add a whole bunch of different interfaces and assign the interfaces to the different VLANs, but that's kind of weird and costly. And typically routers don't have that many interfaces. But like I said, the real world example is to go ahead and engage uh, and, and acquire a multi-layer switch. By the way, how we do this nifty trick is we carve up the physical interface on the router into multiple sub-interfaces that understand 802.1Q. We say, all right, this sub-interface is for VLAN 10. This sub-interface is for VLAN 20. This sub-interface is for VLAN 30. Okay? So we create sub-interfaces that understand VLAN tagging, and we go ahead and accommodate the inter-VLAN routing using this approach. Let's do this. Let's go to our devices and let's configure, let's go to switch four. Okay, here in switch four, we are gonna go ahead and configure our ports that are going to participate in the router and a stick experiment, if you will. Let's have router eight be the router on a stick for routers six and seven. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the port on switch four that connects to router eight, that is interface fast ethernet zero slash eight, and I'm gonna make sure that it's a trunk port. Yeah, it needs to trunk VLANs out to the router on a stick. So I'm going to say switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q. Boy, we sure have seen this a lot of times. 
I'm going to say switch port mode trunk. And that should do it. That should form that trunk with the router that exists out fast ethernet zero slash eight. Now what I'll do is I'll go out to that router eight and we'll configure it. All right. And we'll go to the interface fast ethernet zero slash one and we'll no shut it and we'll make sure there's no IP address on it. Yeah, there is not going to be an IP address on the physical interface. We're going to put the IP addresses on the sub interfaces. And watch how we do this. We say interface fast ethernet zero slash one dot 80. And we create a sub interface. And we say I uh, encapsulation dot one Q and this will be for VLAN 80. Does the VLAN identifier have to match the VLAN sub interface? No. I just do that because it makes sense to do it. I'll now, now say, all right, the IP address of the default gateway, this is really the default gateway IP address, isn't it, that users are going to reference is 10.80.80.8. That's it. It's that easy. I'll exit that sub interface and I'll create another sub interface. This will be 90. We'll say encapsulation dot one Q 90 and we'll give an IP address of 10.90.90.8. All right. We look at our configuration, show IP interface brief, and we can see that we have IP addresses assigned to sub interfaces on this router. And these sub interfaces are going to understand 802.1Q and they're going to be looking for VLAN 80 and VLAN 90 respectfully. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go out to uh, router 6 and we'll have it be in VLAN 80 and router 7 be in VLAN 90. And we'll see if they can communicate with each other through this router on a stick. Now, let's go back to our switch for a moment here and let's make sure we define VLAN 80 and VLAN 90. Good. So we created VLAN 80 and 90, and let's put those on the appropriate interfaces. Interface FA0 slash 6, your switch port mode access, and you're in VLAN 80. Interface fast ethernet 0 slash 7, your switch port mode access, and you're in VLAN 90. I did that fast because you're familiar with all those commands now. If we do a show VLAN brief, we see we've got VLANs 80 and 90, and they're in interfaces 6 and 7, respectfully. All righty. 
Now we'll go out to R6. And on R6, we'll say interface fast ethernet zero slash one, IP address 10.80.80.6, no shut. Now, how will R6 know how to get to the 90 subnet, let's do a default route. If you want to send traffic to anywhere, send it to 10.80.80.8. The default gateway address that we set up on the router on a stick. And we need a similar configuration on R7. We'll say interface fast ethernet zero slash one, IP address 10.90.90.7, no shut, IP route, Go to 10.90.90.8, the default gateway address that we set up on the router on a stick. And we are done. It is time to verify. How do we verify? It's simple. We ping. 10.80.80.6 from this R7 device that is in the 10.90.90 subnet. And it works. The router on a stick is routing between these VLANs. I think all that's left for us to do here on this topic is just draw out what we just configured to draw out that topology that we just configured and kind of review the steps that I went through, right? So we have this switch four. And this switch four has a connection out to R8. We did a dot one Q trunk there between switch four and R8. We did two sub-interfaces on R8, one for VLAN 80 and one for VLAN 90. And we put the default gateway addresses on those respective sub-interfaces. We then took a router, R6, and we put it in VLAN 80. We took a router, R7, and we put it into VLAN 90, and we ensured that R8 would route between those VLANs and facilitate the inter-VLAN communications. Simple, but not all that desirable. I mean, let's face it. If something happens to this trunk link, we are in really big trouble. Yeah, something happens to that trunk link, we're in huge trouble.